Hello and welcome to Fox Gaming and the second episode in the Battle Company series The Darkness of Moria. The last time we saw our warriors and heroes, they were fighting their way into Moria. The evil side were fighting the dwarves and the good side was fighting the goblins. All of the companies gained entrance and they are eager to find out what is in store for them inside the mountain. In this episode, the battle companies will fight each other to gain a foothold just inside the mountain gates. I will go over the matchup and scenario in just a minute, but first I have some news. I have just started a Buy Me A Coffee page. And if you would like to buy me a cup of coffee, I would greatly appreciate it. If you do, I will shout you out during the next video I make. If you don't want to do that, that is totally fine. But if you do, I greatly appreciate it because it gives me the means to get some caffeine in my body and make better videos, buy more stuff for the channel and so on. I have already gotten one sponsor and that is my lovely wife. So thank you very much for believing in me and contributing to my content. And uh, yeah, let's get into the video. The first battle in this episode will be between the Last Alliance and the forces of Kirith Ungol. Kerishla, Jonur and Joshok have just entered with their warband through the mountain gates and they are looking to get a foothold within the mountain. But on the other side of the battlefield we have the Last Alliance led by Carzo Nil and with him Luisan and Simonir. They will have to try to stop Krishla's crushers so they gain the advantage of the foothold within the mountain now. The scenario for this uh, episode will be uh, a chance encounter and that is just so that the battle companies will have to try to get the opposing battle company down to 25% of their starting numbers to win. There cannot be a draw in this mission, so let's go on to priority for turn one. Let's go! Priority for the last alliance is a six and Crystal's Crushers gets a one, so the last alliance will start. All right, that is movement phase done, and uh, the main force of the last lines moved up closer to this house. Simonir went out to the flank to fire his bow, but in return the orcs moved to this side over here, trying to negate line of sight for Simonir. But they couldn't quite do it. Uh, he has a shot and he will take it, but it, it's a in the way roll for the building. Let's go to shooting phase. Simonid will fire his bow at this orc with spear in the front over here, needing a 4-up to hit because he moved and he misses. No shooting for the orcs of Kirith Angle, so on to priority for the next turn. The last lions gets a 6 and the orcs gets a 2. Alright, so two of the warriors from the last lions went into the dwarven house in the middle of the battlefield. Karzanil and Luisan moved up to the door, defending them uh, from rear attacks. And Simonir moved over here full distance to be able to support their comrades in later turns. And the orcs clustered together towards the house and the lonely archer uh, went three inches out to the side to have a clear shot onto the shooting face for the Kirith Angul warband. The orc will fire his bow at Karzunil and he needs a 6 to hit because he moved and he misses. Priority for the next turn goes to the last alliance once again. So that is movement done for both sides and the two heroes over here moved a little bit back to uh, not be charged by the oncoming orcs. They are outnumbered after all. Simonir stood still to fire his bow and inside the house we have a clash with uh, two warriors from each side. So let's go to the shooting phase for the last alliance. Simonir will fire his bow at Joshok in the front and he need a 3 up to hit because he stood still and he hits strength of 3 against defense 4. He needs a 5 to wound him and he doesn't get it. The orc moved full distance so he cannot fire his bow so we go into the fight phase inside the building. We have a 2 on 2. The elf will fight with a two-handed weapon. He is the white die and they, they get a 4 high. 
And the orcs need to respond here and gets a four, which means the orcs lose the fights. The elf will strike first with a strength of three against a defense of five. He need fives, but he struck two handedly. So four is to kill the orc and he gets a six. The orc is slain. Kink. Priority for the next turn goes to the last lions once again. All right, so we are now in the thick of it. The elves and men went into combat as best they could, but they get surrounded by the orcs because they are outnumbered. Inside the building, one elf is fighting one orc, so let's see how this turns out in the fight phase. Let's start with this fight over here, an elf against an orc, and the orc will set the bar. He gets a six, and the elf cannot do anything about that because he's minus one penalty. The orc will need a five up to kill, and he doesn't get it. Next, we have Carzonil versus Joshok, each supported by a friend. And Carzonil will set the bar. He gets a six, and the other one gets a one, but they win on fight value either way. I think I'll just have to check the fight values. Their fight values are equal, so Joshok will start. He needs a six, and he gets it. It's a tie, and the other work, no need to roll, but that's it. Okay, so a roll off on a one to three, it goes to evil, and it goes to good. Carzonil needs a four up to wound, and he gets it. The other man with spear also needs a four up to wound, and no. Fate roll for Joshok. And he fails! He is slain! Actually, he is not slain, because he can use one point of might, turning that 3 into a 4, saving himself. Next, we have Luison against Krishla, and Krishla sets the bar. He gets a 5, and Luison gets a 1, losing the fights. Krishla needs 5s to wound, and he gets a 4, using one point of might, turning that into a 5, causing a wound to Luison, who will have to take a fate roll and he fails Louisan is slain next we have simonir against three orcs jonner and two friends and simonir will set the bar he gets a three jonner gets a five winning the fights jonner will need fives to kill and he gets a six the orc with bow gets a two, and the last orc with the two-handed weapon needs a four, and he gets it. Simonid is slain. Not enough fate to save him. Priority for the next turn goes to the last alliance once again. All right, the last alliance has lost two of its members and are pulling back into the dwarven house for a last stand. They are surrounded by orcs. How will this turn out? Let's go to the fight phase. Starting with this fight over here, the elf will strike with normal weapons. So he sets the bar and gets a four. The two orcs with spear gets a five. They need fives to kill the elf and double ones. Next, we have Krishla fighting against Karzunil and a friend inside the building. And Krishla will set the bar. He gets a three. Karzunil gets the six, winning the fight. Needing fours to kill Krishla. And he gets a five, causing a wound. And the friend in the back, can he do something? No. Fate roll for Krishla. And. And he fails, but he will use a point of might, turning that into a four, saving himself. Priority for the next turn goes to the last lines once again. All right, this is like the movie 300 with the uh, good forces uh, fighting in the hot gates. Um, Krishla has sent forth his warrior with two-handed uh, mace to try to deal with Karzonil. And on the other side, we have an elf fighting two orcs. But uh, in this side over here, we have a doorway, so the orcs will have to win the fight to gain entrance and make strikes. Starting with the elf up in this corner, he will strike normally and sets the bar at a three. And the two orcs get a five. Needing fives to wound the elf and doesn't get it. Unfortunate. Next, we have the Urukai with a two-handed weapon. He will set the bar, getting a minus one. Oh, only one. And Karzoniel gets a one as well, and his friend a four. The good side win the fights. 
They need force to kill the Urukai, Karsunil. Can you do it? No, he does not. What about his friends? He does, and the Urukai is slain. Priority for the next turn goes to the last alliance once again. All right, so Krishla sending Jonner into the fray because he has both fate and might available. On to the fight phase now. Can the last lines turn this around? Let's see. The elf against the two orcs. The elf strikes normally and sets the bar at a one. Terrible. And the two orcs gets a four. Once again, needing fives to kill. Can they do it? No, another four and one. This is excruciating. Next, we have Jonner, and he will set the bar against Karzanil and his friend, and he gets a four. Karzanil gets a two, and the other one, a five, winning the fight. Needing fours to kill Jonner, and Karzanil will start. He gets a four, and the other one gets a three. So, fate roll for Jonner, and he saves. All right, so the last alliance are buckling into the building, trying to defend it from the orcs who is surrounding them. And uh, they have to use that advantage if they are having any hopes of surviving this battle. Let's go into priority for the next turn. Last alliance gets a six and a six for the orcs as well. So the orcs will start. So on this side over here, Krishna is sending forth his archer into combat with Karzanil. And over here, the orcs are going on the advance, getting further into the building. This may be ugly for the next turn if the elf cannot do anything about it. So let's get into the fight phase. The elf will set the bar and striking normally, he gets a six. And the orcs cannot beat that because of their lower fight value. So the elf will win. Needing a five up to kill the orc and doesn't get it. Over on this side, the orc will set the bar and gets a two. Karzunil gets a two as well, and a one from his friend, but wins on fight value. Needing force to wound the orc, and Karzunil gets it. The orc is slain. Priority for the next turn goes to the last lions. All right, so this time the man with spear and shield moved over to help out his elf friend as there are more models on that side. Karasunil is standing in the doorway still trying to fend off Jonner. Let's go into the fight phase. Starting with this fight over here, Jonner will set the bar. He gets a five and Karasunil gets a three. In the way roll because of the doorway and he passes. Strength of four against defense five, so fives to wound, and doesn't get it. Jonner has a point of might, turning his four into a five, causing a wound to Karzunil, which will have to take a fate roll. And he fails! Karzunil is slain! Over on this side, the orcs will set the bar. The first orc gets a six, and the other one a one, and the elf gets a one, and the other man gets a four. The orcs will need five or more to wound the elf and they get a four high. Priority for the next turn goes to the last alliance who got a six, it just got bumped. All right, so the elf got to handle this side by himself once again and the man moved back into contact with Jonner. Let's go to the fight phase. Jonner against the man and Jonner sets the bar. He gets a two and the man gets a one. In the way roll for Jonner and he passes. Needing five up to kill, no. The elf against the two orcs and the elf or the orcs gets a three and the elf Gets a two, losing the fight. Fives to kill the elf? No, what's happening? Priority, this goes towards the end, goes to the last lines. And we have the same fights. The orcs will set the bar, they get a four, and the elf gets a six. Needing fives to kill the orc, and he gets it. The orc is slain finally. Next, we have Jonner against a man of Numenor, and the man gets a six, and Jonner gets a one. The man needs four up to wound, and he gets it. Jonner is slain because he has no fates left. All right, so I just uh, forgot to take courage tests for the last lines for the couple of last rounds. So they will do that now, starting with the elf 
and uh, he's fine for one round. Can he survive another one? Yes, he does. The man will also need to take a couple of tests. The first one is passed and the second one is also passed. So here's the deal. Both of the forces are broken and if they lose one more model, they lose the battle. So let's do the priority for the next turn. Last lines gets a two and the orcs get a five. Joshok will take a courage test. Let's see if he can stand his ground. And he does, which means this orc will also stand his ground. Krishla, on the other hand, is a hero and have to roll for himself. Can he do it? Yes, he can. So the orcs of Kirith, uh, Kirith Angle went into combat with both of the last alliance, last warriors. So let's go into the fight phase. The last lines will not have to take courage tests. And uh, let's start with Krishla. Krishla against the man and Krishla sets the bar at a five. And the man gets a three. In the way roll because of the doorway and pass. Needing a five up to kill the man. And he gets it. The man is slain. Lastly, we have this fight over here. If the elf can kill one more, the game is a tie. And the elf will set a bar. He gets a two and uh, Joshok gets a two as well. And the other orc also gets a two. And that means that the elf wins on fight value. He will need a five up to kill the orc, tying the game. It's down to this. On a five up, the game is a tie. If not, the orcs will win. And the orcs win the fight, or <laughs> win the scenario. What an incredible battle. Let's move over to the next one. Michael Lear's veterans have just entered the mountain and set up a camp inside. But then their enemies from Karna arrives through the gates, ready to try to get a foothold within the mountain. Let's go into priority for the first round. Hey -o. Priority for Skiliath is a 2 and for Karna we have a 1, which means Skiliath will start. Alright, that is movement, uh, movement done for both sides. Michael Lear and Talero are uh, going towards the house in the center. And Malarzian on the right flank ready to fire his bow. And one ranger over on this side as well. Karna moved in closer to get into close combat and to get some firing lanes for their ranged weapons. Let's go into shooting for Oskiliath. This ranger will start and he will fire his bow into these warriors of Kana. And, and he needs a 4 up to hit because he moved. And he hits strength of 2 against defense 4, so 5 up to kill. And that one is close, but not enough. Malarzian will try as well, trying to hit the uh, Haradrim in the front. He will need a 4 up because he moved. And he hits, needing a 5 to kill. And he gets it! Slays this warrior. Shooting phase for the Serpent's Horde. Jackson Nell will fire his bow into Malarzian over here. He will need a 4 up because he moved. And he gets a 3. Next, these two archers will fire at this ranger over here. They will need a 5 up because they moved. And they hit two, time, two times, and strength of two against uh, defense of four. They will need fives, and nope. Priority for the next turn goes to Oskiliath. All right, so that is movement done, and uh, Oskiliath moved up on this side of the building, placing one spearman with shield inside. Malarsian continued his uh, adventure on this flank over here. Remember, he can move full and still shoot his bow. This ranger stood still to fire his weapon, and the um, Haradrim, or Karna, uh, got in closer, getting some spear support behind their heroes, and their bows are targeting Malarsian. Let's go into the shooting phase. This ranger will start firing his bow into Jackson L over there, needing a 3 up to hit because he stood still. He hits strength of 2 against a defense of 3, so 5 up to wound, doesn't get it. Malarzian will fire at the same target, Jackson L, needing a 4 up to hit because he moved, and he hits, needing a 5 up to wound, and he gets the wound! Fate roll for Jackson L, and he gets a 3, but he will use a points of might, turning that into a 4, saving himself. 
Next, Karna will start to fire back and Jackson L will start at Malarzian. He will need a 3 up to hit because he stood still and he hits, needing a 5 to wound and he gets a 3. These two archer will fire at Malarzian as well, needing 4 up to hit because they stood still, getting 1 hit and a 5 up to wound. No, but they have poisoned arrows and can reroll to wound on the 1 and no. Priority for the next turn goes to Karna. Alright, that is movement done and Karna went into combat over here. So we have a 2 against 2, 2 times over. And their archers moved in a little bit closer, can still fire their bows, but they need to back up their friends. Uh, Malazian continued his uh, ranger journey on this side of the building. And uh, this one over here stands in the doorway to defend it. Preventing uh, the uh, Haradrim to come in from behind. This ranger stood still to fire their bow and let's go into the shooting phase. In the shooting phase for Karna, Jackson L will start firing his bow at Malazia, needing a 4 up to hit because he moved and he misses. The two other archers will do the same thing and they get one hit, needing a 5 up to wound and they get the 6. Fate roll for Malazia and he saves. It's time for Malarzian to uh, fire back. He will fire at Jackson L, needing a 4 up to hit because he moved and he hits, needing a 5 to kill. And he gets the 6, and Jackson L is out of fate, so he is slain. This ranger over here will fire at these archers, and he needs a 3 up to hit because he stood still and he misses. Next, we move into the fight phase, and Jeremiah and a friend is fighting Michael Ear and a friend. Uh, and the uh, Warriors of Karna will set the bar, and they get a 6 high. And Michael Ear gets a 6 as well, and the other one gets a 4. But the Watcher of Karna is much better to fight, it has a fight of 4, so they win the fight. Alright, they will need 6s to wound, can they do it? No, but uh, Jeremiah will use his points of might, turning this 5 into a 6, scoring 1 wound on Michael Ear. And he will have to take a, a fate roll, and he saves. Next, we have Stuart Lim and a friend against a warrior of Oskiliath and Tylero in uh, the back. And uh, the uh, watcher of Car or uh, Stuart Lim and his friend will set the bar, they get a 6 high. And that means that they win on fight value no matter what. They need sixes to wound and gets one six. And that means that this warrior is slain. Priority for the next turn. Skiliath gets a two and Karna gets a four. All right, so Karna went into combat over here with these three warriors and got countercharged by the warrior in the doorway and this ranger over here. Uh, these uh, warriors with bow moved a little bit away to negate the charge range of the other ones and Malarzian moved up full to continue his journey. Let's go into the shooting phase for Karna. Two shots at Malarzian from these two and they need a 5 up to hit because they moved and they get one hit needing a 5 to wound Malarzian. No! Malarzian will fire back at these two and he needs a 4 up to hit because he moved and he hits Needing a 5 up to kill, and he gets it. One of the warriors is slain. Next, we have the fight phase, starting with this warrior of Oskiliath against this warrior of Karna. And Oskiliath sets the bar, getting a 6, and Karna gets a 1, which means they lose the fights. Needing 5s to kill? No! Next, we have Jeremiah against Michael Ear and a friend, and Jeremiah sets the bar with his two attacks getting a 6, and that means he wins automatically. Needing 6s to wound, and he gets it, and Michael Ear is out of fate, which means he is killed. Next, we have the ranger against this warrior of Karna, and a, or <laughs> Haradrim warrior, and the ranger sets the bar, he gets a 2, the Haradrim warrior gets a 4. 5s to kill the ranger, no! Next, we have Tylero against Stuart Lim, and Tylero will set the bar. He gets a 6, and Stuart Lim needs a 6 here to win, and he gets it! 6 is to win Tylero, and he gets a 5. He will use his might points to turn that into a 6, 
causing a wound on Tylero, who can try to save with fate. And he saves. Priority for the next turn. I imagine this one is important. And Oskiliath gets a 1 and Kauna gets a 4. Alright, so it has become a 5 against 5 in close combat. These uh, warriors went into combat with each of their respective adversaries and this archer had enough of Malarzian's evil, or not evil, but amazing shooting and went into combat with him. So let's go into the fight phase. Starting with Malarzian over here, he sets the bar and gets a 3 and the Haradrim warrior also gets a 3. Malarzian has the better fight, which means he wins the combat and can make strikes. He will need fives to kill, and he gets it! He is slain. Next, we have a one-on-one -on -one fight, and the Haradrim warrior will set the bar, and he gets a three, and the Stiliath warrior gets a two. Needing sixes to kill? No! Ranger against a Haradrim warrior, and the ranger sets the bar, gets a one, and the Haradrim warrior gets a two. Fives to kill the ranger? No. Next, we have Jeremiah against the uh, warrior of Oskiliath. And Jeremiah sets the bar and he gets a four. And the warrior of Oskiliath gets a four as well, but loses on fight value. Six is to kill the warrior of Oskiliath. Ooh, gets double fives. Next, we have Stuart Lim against Tylero. And Stuart Lim sets the bar and he gets a six, which means he wins automatically on fight value and can make strikes. He needs sixes, and he gets it. Fate roll for Tylero, and he fails. He's slain. All right, so this match is really close. Both battle companies are reduced to um, five or four models remaining, uh, but none of them are broken just yet. They need one more casualty each. So let's go into priority and the Oskiliath gets one and Karna gets two. All right, the warriors of Karna have gone into combat all round, but Malarzian did not have enough movement to get in. So the evil side has a major advantage in this uh, fight phase. Jeremiah against a Oskiliath warrior who will be shielding. Jeremiah gets a five and the Oskiliath warrior needs a five here. No. Sixes to kill? No! Next, Stuart Lim against a Ranger, and Stuart Lim sets the bar. He gets a five. And the Ranger gets the six, winning the fight. The Ranger needs four up to wound, and he gets it. Fate roll for Stuart Lim, and he saves. And the last fight, this Oskiliath uh, warrior will use his shield and will be shielding. And he gets a 5. And the Haradrim warriors gets a 4. Priority for the next turn goes to Oskiliath. They went into fights on with everyone and uh, doubled up on uh, Stuart Lim. And this warrior will fight alone against these two. So let's go into the fight phase and see how this turns out. Starting with this fight, the warrior of Oskiliath will be shielding and he gets a 5. And the warriors of Hadehar Radrim gets a 6. 6 is to kill. And they get it. They slay the Oskiliath warrior. Next, we have Stuart Lim against Malarzian and a fellow ranger. And Stuart Lim sets the bar. He gets a 5. Malarzian gets a 4. And the other ranger gets a 5 as well. That means that the fight is a tie. 1 to 3 goes to evil. And it does. Stuart Lim is going for the ranger first. Needing a 5 up to kill. Doesn't get it. And he has no might left, and the second attack on the same target? No! Last fight, uh, Yoskiliath warrior will strike normally, and he gets a 6! Stuart Lim? No, not Stuart Lim. J Jeremiah gets a 3, and that means he loses. 4 up to kill Jeremiah, and he gets it! Fate roll! A saves! All right, now that the Oskiliath force is broken, they will need to start to take courage uh, checks. But let's see who gets this priority. And the evil side gets a 3, Oskiliath gets a 2. And this is how the fight looks like. Let's do Jeremiah first. He sets the bar and gets a 6, which means he wins automatically. Needing 6s to kill? No! 
Next, we have Stuart Lim against the Ranger, the stubborn Ranger. And Stuart Lim sets the bar. He gets a three and the Ranger gets a six. Four up, two wound, and he doesn't get it. Lastly, we have Malarsian against two warriors, and Malarsian sets the bar, gets a three, the two warriors get a five. Needing fives to wound Malarsian, and they get two wounds. Malarsian is slain. The battle continues for another turn, as no company has been reduced to 25%, and Karna gets a one, Askilat gets a four. And that means courage checks. Let's start with the ranger. He has a courage of three and he gets a nine, so he passes. And the last one gets a four, which means he flee the battlefield. Realizing that the battle is lost either way, the lonely ranger will just move as far as he can to avoid close combat. So he will survive, but Oskiliath has lost, Karna is the victor, so now let's go into the post battle and uh, have a look at the injuries, reinforcements and advancements. Alright, so welcome to the post battle and we will take a look at Karna's battle companies first, uh, starting with injuries. So uh, we have one hero who was uh, damaged and that was Jackson L. And Jackson L gets a 12, which is protected by the Valar. Makes a full recovery, and in addition, he gets one fate point in uh, extra. Yeah, he gets one extra fate point. So he has up to two fate points and a full recovery. Next, we have the Warriors, starting with the first one. He gets a 6, which is a full recovery. The next one gets a 7, full recovery. And the last one gets a 7, full recovery. Next we have advancements and uh, the three heroes got enough kills to uh, get a chance on a promotion or they can get the promotion. Let's start with Stuart Lim on the right hand side. He will choose the path of the general being the leader after all. So he gets a, an eight and that is attack or wound. So he will choose wound to be more survivable. Next we have Jeremiah. He will choose the path of the warrior and he gets an 8, which is Strength or Defense. He will choose Defense as he has Defense 3 and very many uh, of the other warriors will wound him on 4+. plus. But if he does this, it uh, will become a 5+, plus. so he will take plus 1 Defense. Lastly, we have Jackson L. He will choose the path of the Ranger and he gets a 7 which is shoot. The hero may increase their shoot value by 1 to a maximum of 3 plus. As he already has a 3 plus shoot, uh, I will choose the army specific upgrade. And that is Master of the Haunted City, which means that he causes terror. Lastly, for uh, Karna, is reinforcements. So let's see what they get. They get a 3, which is a Heradrim warrior with spear. That is Karna done, and we're moving over to Osgiliath, starting with injuries. Starting with the warriors over here uh, on the right hand side, they get a 9, which is a full recovery, and the other one gets a 9 as well. Next we have Malazian, and he gets a 10. And that is an old battle wound. Uh, it, that means that he has to roll a d6 before each battle, and on a 1 he has to sit that one out. Next we have Michael Lear, and he gets an 8, which is a full recovery. And lastly we have Tylero, and he gets an 8 as well, full recovery. Alright, so the next step is uh, advancements, and we have a ranger and a warrior with shield and spear, who gets a chance on being promoted. And we have uh, Malarzian and Tylero who get enough kills to get a advancement. Starting with Tylero, we put him on the path of the warrior. He gets a 7 and that is fight, which means he gets a fight of uh, 4 instead of 3. Malarzian will continue on his path of the ranger and he gets a 3, which is uh, the same as he already has, so he rolls again, gets a 6, which is steady aim. The hero does not suffer minus 1 penalty to hit if they moved during the move phase, so that fits in well with his ability to move full and shoot. Next we have the ranger, and on a 6 he will become a hero. 
he does not. And the warrior with spear and shield gets a 3, so no effect on him as well. Alright, so for reinforcements, uh, they got two victory points or influence points because they lost the battle, but they had one from earlier. So they can still roll at the table and they get a five, which is a Ranger of Gondor. The next battle company we will take a look at is Kirith Angol, and we'll start with injuries and start with warriors, starting from the left. And that's a full recovery on the uh, warrior with shield. The next one gets a full recovery. And the one with the two-handed weapon gets a four, which means he has to miss the next game. And the last one gets a ten, full recovery. On to the heroes, we have Jonner, and he gets a nine, which is just a scratch, which means he can roll again or miss a game. And he will roll again, getting an eight, and that is a full recovery. For advancements, we have Krishla on the right and Jonner on the left, getting enough experience to level up. Krishla, being the army leader, will go on the path of the general, and he gets a 4, which is lead by example. Friendly models within 6 inches of the hero gain a bonus of 1 to their courage, and that is a nice buff. Next, we have Jonner, and he will go on the path of the warrior, and he gets a 7, which is fight, which means he now has a fight of 5. Alright, so let's take a look at reinforcements for Kirith Angle. They have 5 influence points, so they can roll once, and they get a 5, which is a Mordor Urukai with choice of weaponry. They will use 1 influence point to turn that into a 6, and that means that they get a giant spider instead. Lastly, we have the last lines, starting with injuries, and they have one warrior who got injured over here, so let's start with him. He gets a 7, which is a full recovery. Next, we have Karzunil, and he gets a 9, which is just a scratch, so he will roll again, getting a 9, which is just a scratch. Rolling once more, getting a 10, which is an old battle wound. Next, we have Louisan, and he gets a 9, which is just a scratch, rolling again, getting a 10, which is an old battle wound. Lastly, we have Simonir, and he gets a 6, which is a full recovery. On to advancement. Simonir and Karzunil had enough experience to level up, so let's start with Karzunil. We will choose the path of the general for him, and he gets a 7, and that is... Courage. Increased courage value by 1 up to maximum of 6. Next we have Simonir and he will be on the path of the ranger. And he gets a 11 and that is heroic accuracy. The hero may now use the heroic accuracy heroic action in addition to any others they have access to. Alright, so for reinforcements they have 3 influence points in total. So let's see what they get. They get a 3, which is a warrior of Numenor with spear and shield. Alright, so that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Click the link in the description below to support me on uh, buymeacoffee.com. And if you don't want to spend any money, that is totally fine. Just subscribe, like and share this video and leave a comment if you have any questions. Alright, until next time guys, see ya!